This is John, and this is the video companion to my Kotlin Thursdays article on DSLs in Kotlin. So today, I'm going to show how we can extend a DSL and add new elements to it. The principles I'm going to use are the same as you would use if you were designing a DSL from scratch. I'm using the HTML DSL provided by JetBrains in the Kotlin X package. So first let me show you around what I have set up so far. I have a couple helper functions here that help me invoke the Kotlin HTML DSL and CSS DSLs and I'll put the result into any print writer I wish. I have a test here that will invoke my sample page function and output it to index.html in my build output. Here is my actual code, and the code that is here, well, I'll put the page you see on the right. So as you can see, this code is a little easier to read than raw HTML, um, and it has the type safety you would expect from a Kotlin DSL. So it makes it kind of easy to write an HTML web page in a way that is type safe and uh, dynamic and lends itself to reusability as outlined in the article. However, it is still verbose and there's a lot of boilerplate here. I want to create a web page that is a Rolodex. The Rolodex will contain contact information for a number of individuals, in this case characters from the cartoon Adventure Time. Each contact will have the same set of information about themselves. On my page, I currently have to duplicate all of the code that goes into forming this HTML chunk each time I have another character. So I want to reduce the boilerplate of all of this by building a DSL function that will replicate this pattern for me with minimal boilerplate. So the first thing I need to do is figure out what my objects are that I'm going to be building. A DSL is almost always backed by some type of object that's going to store the information until it is actually invoked to build the thing that you're trying to build. So in this case, a contact is definitely one of my objects. Now I'm naming my class CONTACT with all capital letters. This is a convention that was started by the JetBrains team working on the HTML and CSS DSLs. And um, the reason for it is mostly just so that when you're looking at a DSL, when you see a class that is in all capital letters, you know that this is a DSL class. So my class is going to be a mutable class because as the DSL is processed, it's going to be mutating this object to set up all of the information that we want. Many DSLs will actually put a layer in between the DSL language and the actual output of the DSL, um, and they'll use a builder pattern underlying the DSL. But for simplicity's sake, we can just make our DSL classes be mutable. So the properties I want for my contact class are name, and we'll just allow them to have blank default values, an email, and a phone number. Oh, and let's not forget the avatar image. 
we'll represent this as a string. These images in my project are stored in the resources directory. Next, we're going to create an enclosing class around these contacts. So for that, that's going to represent basically the Rolodex itself. The Rolodex class will be the entry point for our, our whole kind of sub-DSL that we have within the HTML DSL. Next, I'll create my Rolodex class. Now the Rolodex doesn't really have any properties in and of itself. However, we do want it to contain all of the contacts within. So I will create a contact list. This will be a list of type contact. And we will initialize it to be an empty list. Next, we're going to need a way to actually add things to our contact list. However, before we do that, I want to take a step back from the model that we've built here and look at what we want our API to look like. So in our sample page, the Rolodex starts immediately within the body. I'm going to just make some space before our Rolodex and put in some code that we want to compile. It's good to think about the design of your DSL up front because the point of a DSL is to have a nice clean API for someone to use. So in this case, I want to have a function called Rolodex that creates a Rolodex. Within this, I probably want to be able to just declare each individual contact. And within there, maybe specify the information for that contact. Name, email, and phone. So this does not compile, but my ultimate goal is that this will. Here's my design. So at the very top level, we want to be able to create this Rolodex using this Rolodex function. This will have to be a function on the body element, because that is the element in which we want to start the Rolodex. So I will create a file that's going to be kind of a utility file for my DSL, Rolodex DSL. This is going to contain various functions that are going to help in the DSL that aren't tied to a specific DSL object. In this case, I want to add an extension function to the body element called Rolodex. the Rolodex method takes a lambda parameter. So we need to define what type of lambda this is going to be. And in this case, we want the object here on line 14 to be a Rolodex object, like we do have here with the body element. In order to achieve that, we will use a function literal with a receiver. So we'll call our parameter Rolodex, but what it will be is a function literal with a receiver of Rolodex. Generally in DSLs, the function literal with the receiver is return unit. 
but they don't have to. They can return an object that maybe returns a hook to the user to use for other things if they want an actual reference to the Rolodex being created.